Hello friends, welcome back. My name is Dana and hi, welcome. So we are starting off the new year with some empties because I think that those are good videos to like, I don't know, see what I've decluttered out of my life, see what I've used, see what I repurchased, just get my thoughts on it. And you guys tend to like the um, empty videos. So that's what we're doing today. I have a few of them coming up. This first one today is on moisturizers and sunscreens, just because it kind of fell out like that, fell out. Maybe, I don't know, came to be like that. <laughs> so with all that said, there's nothing more for me to say. We're gonna get into it. If you do enjoy this video, give it a big old thumbs up, subscribe, hit the little notification bell because I do post videos quite often and we'll get into it. Okay guys, so we're gonna start off with the sunscreens first because I have a lot of empty sunscreens, which is always exciting for me. I like do a little happy dance when I finish up a sunscreen because I have so many. So let's start there and I'll tell you what I've repurchased and what I absolutely will not. Actually, you know what? Most of these were happy ones. So the first one is the Glossier Invisible Shield. This is my second bottle, maybe third, and I already have another one. I just love this stuff. I hate, hate, hate how much it is. It's not that much, but you only get one fluid ounce and I forget the price, but it's way too expensive for what you're getting. But that said, it is invisible, it's clear, it's SPF 35, which is better because I think a lot of times they're SPF 30. It's just easy to use. The pump doesn't give me issues. There's a little bit left there. I mean, there's nothing to see. It's, it's truly invisible. It's a little bit more hydrating than some of like the super goop, maybe the unseen, which one, or which has more of that kind of matte feel, the very, very heavy silicone feel where it just dries down like matte and no shine. This one gives you a bit more of a glow to it. So if you are looking for something maybe on its own or under makeup that has that glow versus that kind of matte um, feel to it, this is a better option as an invisible sunscreen. So. I'll probably continue to repurchase this. I know some people have not loved it. I think it's pilled on them a little, but I've never had that issue on its own or under makeup. So it might be with the combination of your skin type and the skincare that you use underneath. But for me, it's been just a holy grail for a long time. The next one that I have that I also thoroughly loved, this is the Mad About Skin Hydra Protect and Hydrate SPF 50. This bottle has been through the ringer. I took it to Peru with me last year, or this year, I guess last year, when you're seeing this. I love the sunscreen. It does have a little bit of a kind of like um, yellowish tinge to the sunscreen, very reminiscent of the La Roche-Posay one, but it doesn't show up on your skin. It's a chemical sunscreen. What I love about this though, is it dries down really has not like maybe like a natural matte finish so it doesn't feel too too tight tight and constricting but it doesn't have any of that extra glow that sometimes i don't want <laughs> because i can get in other ways i love the fact that it's spf 50 this has strong protection i wore it up in the basically the andy mountains in peru where the sun was just like beaming on my face and i did not burn i didn't get anything no discoloration anything like that and I've already repurchased it. And it's a smaller, well, he's not small. He has maybe like 100,000 subscribers, but not about skin, he has a YouTube channel and it is considered a small brand. So I do like to support small brands when I can. So another favorite. I guess let's just go over the favorites first. This is the Bliss Blockstar. I think this is my second bottle of this. This is one of the best tinted matte sunscreens out there. My only qualm about it is that it's SPF 30. I wish there's just maybe a little bit higher SPF, but you can get it at Target, you can get it online. The other qualm about it, it has a lavender scent to it. So sometimes that can be like a little much for some people who are sensitive to scents, but otherwise I love this stuff. And it's really, I feel like it has quite a like light neutral undertone, if there's any left in here, there we go. So it is better if you do have like a lighter skin tone, but that said, I think it works really well on a, or a lot of skin tones because it does have that more neutral pull. So you can kind of pull it off even if you have a little bit of a different skin tone. And it's also pretty affordable. So I've told a lot of people about this and I continue to love it. I probably will repurchase it. I just don't know when, because I have so many. Okay, next is one of my 2022 favorites. This is the Tatcha the Silk Screen. And this is Battle Worn. So they finally, I believe they fixed the packaging. It does not peel off anymore. 
This is a really, really beautiful sunscreen. It has a very light neutral undertone. So if you are on the like lighter end of the skin tones, this is probably going to be one of the best ones for you. It is very fluid, which I enjoy, and it soaks into the skin very nicely and you can layer on top of it. But my issue with it is obviously the packaging, which I, I believe they fixed, and then the price. It's very, very expensive. I probably one day would consider repurchasing it, but I think it's a little bit better suited if you do have more normal to dry skin, whereas mine is more normal to oily. So for me, it, while it's really nice, if it weren't so pricey, I would probably be um, more willing to repurchase it. But I think it's just a matter of skin tone, or I mean skin type. But that said, it is a lovely sunscreen. You're just gonna pay a little bit because it's Tatcha and it's a luxury brand. So there we go. All right, um, okay, another that I have that has garnered or gained, I don't know, oh my God, some dust. This is the Supergoop Daily Dose Vitamin C SPF. This is my second one of these, and I will not be repurchasing this. So this is a nice vitamin C plus sunscreen, but it's not actually nicer than the other one that I'm gonna talk about for me, me personally. I, I think this is a really good option for a lot of people. And I feel like I say this often with Supergoop. Supergoop to me is that brand like, you don't know much about sunscreen. They're everywhere, they're in Sephora. They have really nice packaging, kind of like the brand is catchy. But for me, they have more misses than hits. And I wouldn't say that this is necessarily a miss. I just don't think it's me, for me personally, the one that's gonna work. It can feel quite greasy when you put it on. And if you are using it as just your sunscreen and not just like the additional sunscreen on top of another or with another, for me, I would be putting way too much on and looking way too greasy for it to work on its own. So for something like this, I will layer it. I will put it on kind of like almost like skincare and I won't put a lot on and then I'll put another sunscreen layered on top of it. But it is pretty pricey and I just, I'm not like thoroughly, thoroughly in love with it to go out and repurchase it again. And I also think some of their other daily doses, uh, especially the bioretinol, which is the tinted one, I think that's a better one. But also these do tend to, like the bio, or the daily dose do tend to kind of lean for more dry skin people. So if you do have dry skin, I think most of them would work better for you than for me. So again, not terrible, just not the best, and kind of goes with the theory of like super goop having lots of options, which is great, but they're not really suited for someone like me who has maybe like more I don't want to say refined taste, but I'm going to say it. <laughs> okay, let's get into the next one, which is a very, oh, I feel like I have some like existential crisis every time I talk about this. This is the Ilia C Beyond Triple Serum SPF 40. This was in my top video, top five. It was like the honorable mention. This is my first one and I repurchased a second bottle of it. I hate a lot of things about it. Mainly, I hate the packaging. I hate this so much. It's very hard to use. It's not, it does, it's not good. I hate that it does pill on a lot of people. I've had it pill on me, but I have found a way to make it work. I only use a little, maybe like five drops at the most. This is not my primary sunscreen. I use this as kind of like an additional vitamin C as skincare. And then I put a sunscreen over top of it. But for $64, 60 some dollars, it's not worth it for most people. So I understand that and I'm not trying to get people to buy it. This would not be the first one I recommend because it has all these kind of like quirks and like things that you have to figure out to make it work. And that's just not, I mean, for most people that doesn't work. For me, somehow, some way it works. I hated it in the beginning. I liked it in the middle. I hated it again. And then I ended up liking it. So like I said, existential crisis right here. And if you're willing to kind of put up with the issues of it, then maybe repurchase or purchase it. But I wouldn't say the first one you should do is go out and get it. Okay, two more. This is the Naturium. I talked about this in my top five worst, <laughs> only because it's super gritty. The texture of it, it's not always that way, but I did find it to be quite gritty often. And it's shocking because like, I feel like maybe they had like some batch issues because it should be a very fluid, almost invisible sunscreen. I used it a lot during the summer because I like that it's high protection and easy to put on. It's, I don't think it's actually waterproof, but it does like enough that it didn't feel like it was running off my face. And you can get it at Target. It's about 20, $25. 
So I really, really want to like it and I probably will repurchase it just because it's so affordable and available. But I'm hoping that maybe that like gray texture was kind of an issue, a one-time thing and they'll work it out. So to be determined, to be continued if I get it again. And then my last sunscreen is the Evie sunscreen mousse. This is the, um, I believe this is the sport one. So I did a video on this now, it's been a few years. This is a very interesting brand and the technology behind it. And I really, really like the concept of it. I don't like it in my own personal life as much. And the reason for that is because, especially with this one, it feels so, so tacky on my skin. It's a chemical sunscreen, it's a mousse, so you shake it and then you like douse it out, whatever the word is. And when you put it on your face, you kind of rub your hands together. You can see it all in my video and then put it on your face and there's nothing there. Like it doesn't have any visible white cast or anything, but your skin feels so tacky. So for me, this is supposed to be like a sport sunscreen, but I find that it's too tacky for that. And then I have to use it as kind of like a base or a primer under makeup. And it's just not something that I reach for every day. But I think for what it is, if you're like out running long marathons or out in the, the sun all day, I think it is a good brand, but it's really, really meant for sport where like you don't care if it's tacky, your hair is probably out of your face. It's got a very kind of unique set of circumstances that you would need for it. But maybe their other one, I, I reviewed that too, but I don't have it anymore. Maybe that one isn't as tacky and I should try that one, but it's also a little hard to get in the US because it's from, I believe, Sweden? No, wait. Yeah, I think Sweden. So yeah, jury's out on this one. I'll probably try it again one day, but I, I just, the tackiness, stickiness kind of drives me crazy. Okay, let's move on. I only have three of these, but these are the moisturizers that I have finished. The first one is the One Skin. This is the kind of like refill pouch. And this is how they come and then you just put them in the little hard container i have gone through two of these and i'm not going to repurchase this at the time it has such a small amount of product i don't even remember maybe 50 mils and it's incredibly expensive one skin is a brand that is basically um, based off skin longevity and that they say that like this really changes the outcome of your skin I just can't get behind it for this amount of money for something so small that I would need to be repurchasing every single month. Like that's a lot of money. So what I've done now, and I'm still testing, so I, this is not the end of this, but I bought the body one and I was like, this is like $80 for a lot, like 11 ounces or something. And I've been using it on my face, my face and body, even though they say like, don't use it on your face. I think they don't want you to use it on your face because it's cheaper. <laughs> I've not had any issues using it on my face and I'm going to do a video on the brand in general. So it's kind of to be continued with this one, but I do think unless you just want to spend a lot of money every month, it's, I don't know. I don't think it's worth it, but jury is out. So, okay. The last two things I have are the ice um, or Sunday Riley ice ceramide moisturizer and then the super beauty pie super healthy skin this one has changed colors i mean i used it all up except for like the small little fragments at the bottom but it definitely like went bad on me and this was just an unremarkable moisturizer the other moisturizer from beauty pie i've talked about in the past is the triple hyaluronic acid one that one has this like le not not leathery what am i talking about um gel like consistency it feels very soft it feels very supple on your skin this one felt like a normal moisturizer you would have to either have beauty pie to get this or get the membership so if you don't have the membership this is definitely not something worth getting it for and even if you do have the membership this one just felt like a normal moisturizer that like didn't do much for my skin so big big pass for me whereas the ice from Sunday Riley is one of my favorites and I've already repurchased it. This one is, I would say the closest or one of the closest moisturizers to the SkinCeuticals Triple Lipid Restore, where it kind of forms that barrier, like waterproof barrier on your skin. The thing about this that I don't like is the smell. I think it's coconut. I'm pretty sure that's the smell. I can never like pinpoint scents, but I, I and I like coconuts, but I don't like artificial coconut smells. And this one drives me crazy. I, I want them to just be like unscented and that would be so much better. But Sunday Riley tends to have um, scented moisturizers, but I am willing to put up with it because it does form that really, really nice, like what's it, occlusive barrier. I can't use words today. And it's a fraction of the price of the SkinCeuticals. So 
I will probably continue to repurchase this one. This one is one of my favorites. This and the, the original vitamin C CEO um, moisturizer. So very big fan of the Sunny Riley ones and I have a full video on that. So you can go ahead and watch that if you're interested. Whew. Okay guys, I'm so ready to throw these out. Oh, my I voted sticker. <laughs> I hope that helps. Oh, they're all falling. And I hope you enjoyed it guys. And I will see you in my next video and enjoy the beginning of 2024. Bye.